Hey everyone, welcome back to our GPCRs and VR series. Uh, we actually are going to be analyzing some really interesting molecules here alongside a special guest, Asher. Um, Asher, do you want to introduce yourself a little bit about your research? Yeah, totally. So I'm a PhD student uh, in the University of Saskatchewan, and I'm I'm really interested in how psychedelics work inside of uh, serotonin receptors. That's kind of the basis of my research is about uh, serotonin receptors and also uh, cannabinoid receptors, which are the ones that THC and marijuana bind to. So I study those two receptors. So you know, alongside to explore uh, the structures here, we have our medicinal chemist, Mike, uh, alongside Carla as well. So they're going to be analyzing the you know, effects of small molecules with the protein structure. Um, and then, of course, we have Daniel to analyze the structural biology aspects. So yeah, thank thanks, everybody, for joining. Let's dive into the science. And, and so you know, alongside, we have some molecules here. So this one's actually going to be LSD alongside uh, the natural serotonin that we have in white over here, uh, as well as uh, psilocin. So psilocin and serotonin are remarkably similar structures. So makes a lot of sense that they bind in the in the same GPCR, the same you know, protein receptor. And then this is the LSD, which is the co-crystallized molecule of the structure we're going to be discussing today. And all of them contain the this tryptamine scaffold, and that's going to be different here in the diethylamide um, moiety that the LSD contains, which is critical for uh, its uh, mechanism of action, as we're going to be discussing soon. I, I guess the importance of some of this research is, um, you know, antidepressant, uh, antidepressants, among other use cases. And, um, you know, there's a famous paper out there that's actually comparing the effectiveness of a common SSRI, um, the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, um, that's used as an antidepressant. Um, they actually trial it against uh, people that are actually just taking psilocin, uh, the active component in you know, psilocybin and magic mushrooms. So um, yeah, I think that was super interesting that um, you know, people were feeling a bit less depressed taking the magic mushrooms once every three weeks uh, than they were feeling taking the SSRIs every day. Um, that was after a six-week study. So yeah, I think it's super important that, that we have more researchers like you and, and your lab, Asher, um, you know, looking into the science of what's actually going on with these chemicals, uh, you know, brain chemistry, neurotransmitters, all very complex stuff. But yeah, yeah, thanks again for for helping share some of your knowledge with the community. Yeah, absolutely. So this is the first picture of a psychedelic drug in action. You know, here in this study, the structure of uh, LSD in pink here. Uh, with a serotonin receptor, this GPCR receptor we see here, it, uh, it reveals the basis for its long-lasting effects and suggests ways to selectively alter uh, receptor signaling. There's this thing called uh, biased uh, signaling, right, happening with GPCR receptors, and this study, uh, you know, uh, brings a lot of information regarding that. Something interesting to talk about bias is that... Um... You can think about GPCRs as having two basic bias signaling outputs. One of them is called beta arrestin signaling. And if mm -hmm. you if a compound recruits beta arrestin to a strong degree, these compounds are generally intoxicating, um, like mm -hmm. cannabinoids or arrestin bias. But on the other hand, if you activate another pathway called um, cyclic AMP or G protein pathway, these compounds tend to be more uh, used as therapeutics as they don't produce intoxication. They're pretty potent agonists, right? Yeah, psychedelics are very potent agonists, yeah. They're about zero, the potency is about 0 0.093 nanomolar. So they're like microgram dosing when you use a psychedelic like LSD. Right, so as the endogenous um, ligand, the serotonin, this LSD also contains this scaffold, as, as we discussed before, the tryptamine that sits in the orthostatic pocket right here. And there's some hydrogen bonds happening here with this uh, glycine and this uh, aspartate over here. There's actually, potentially it's a salt bridge, I believe, rather. That's and, correct, yeah. Yeah, and so in the phenylalanine that's down here actually is also interacting, uh, you know, doing some hydrophobic interactions with the with the ligand, and it's also helping keeping it tight in there. And uh, well, another feature is here this diethylamide moiety, right? That's a very important. We're going to be discussing soon how it rotates as it binds to the receptor. And um, yeah, and the whole the whole ligand gets um, trapped 
according to this study, um, by this lead. This is acts kind of a lead that keeps and holds the, the molecule due to this leucine residue right here. And um, yeah, that's thought to be the reason why, you know, LSD trips last so long. It's because uh, it, it just has a hard time getting off the receptor, right? And so um, actually that's been proven experimentally by mutating this leucine to an alanine. And that, that shows how there's, um, you know, a lot more room in the pocket for it to, to escape, right? Yep. Yeah, basically, mm -hmm. they, they, you know, you read the paper and they talk about the idea that when you mutate the leucine to an alanine, it actually gets kicked out of the receptor four times as fast than with, than with the leucine. Could we make that right. mutation? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to mutate this leucine residue right here with my selection tool that I just pulled. And yeah, I just selected it. And uh, I'm going to open the modify menu. And um, I have here the mutation functionality. And so the leucine that's selected here, we're going to mutate it to alanine. And so, yeah, we can see how, yeah, there is shorter, right? And it's just interacting uh, much weaker, thus allowing the, the molecule to escape eventually, you know, in, in a shorter period of time. Nice. There you go. Nice. So, yeah, this is the entire... 5-HT2B receptor, also known as serotonin receptor, right? So, yeah, we can see here, this is the exterior side of it. And in blue, again, that's supposed to be the lead that keeps the LSD bound inside of the LSD in pink there. It's just uh, inside of the binding pocket. And now we're going to scale it real big. And we're going to hang inside the pocket ourselves, along with the LSD molecule. <laughs> There you go. So yeah, this diethylamide moiety just uh, rotates to accommodate the molecule in the pocket as it binds. And it's critical also for not only the, you're keeping the ligand here bound, but also for the arresting recruitment that you were discussing before, right, Asher? Yeah, I mean, when you, so if you minimize LSD, uh, there's about a 60 degree difference between the minimized structure and the bound structure. So in reality, LSD's diethylamide moiety rotates by 60 degrees when it binds. And that's one of the strongest drivers for the potency of LSD. And in the paper, they actually prove this. They pr prove uh, that LSD's conformational change by 60 degrees in the diethylamide moiety is a driver for the potency and it recruiting beta arrestin. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, what we were talking about is uh, this being at a sixty degree angle off of the base, and just to give an idea of you know how much of a twist that is, uh, we have our angles here, and, and so if we were to take it back to zero, it's about right there. So between sixty and zero is just yeah, really that subtle twist between that amount and that amount. Just to give an idea of that. So in the paper, they prove that the whole uh, the position of the diethylamide moiety, which is right here, actually is a really strong driver for LSD's potency in terms of how it recruits beta arrestin. So what they did to prove this, which is genius, I thought, is they made these derivatives. One of them is called SSAZ, and one of them is called RRAZ. And if we look at the picture on the top here, the the idea here is that the two the methyl group right here and right here you can make into enantiomers. So in the SSAZ um, derivative, this is the SS derivative. And notice how this group, this methyl and this methyl is pointing the same position as this methyl and this methyl right here. And there's the other one, you can make it RR. And in the RR enantiomer, notice how the methyls are basically trans to it. They're pointing in the opposite directions. So this one's pointing up on this arm, and this one's pointing down, which is opposite to the um, SSAZ. And basically, the difference here is when we look at how it recruits beta arrestin in these graphs, it's that basically you can take drug, add it to receptor, and look how strongly it um, increases beta arrestin recruitment. And in purple here is LSD. Okay. 
And let's notice how the one in green tracks perfectly with LSD. It's actually slightly more potent than LSD. And to notice which enantiomer that is, that's the SSAZ enantiomer, which is the one that positions itself uh, inside the um, receptor the same as the diethylamide moiety. And when we have the RRAZ enantiomer, notice how the potency drops quite a bit. It actually drops right. a lot. And the last thing they do is make this co well, the last thing they do is use this compound called LSA. This is actually not a synthetic compound. This is from a seed called Hawaiian Baby Woodrose. Um, people actually use it as a psychedelic, although it's a, a pretty unpleasant experience from my own experience. Um, but anyway, so this doesn't have a diethyl amide group at all right here. So if we look at right here, this does not have a diethyl amide group. It has two hydrogens coming off. Two hydrogens are really small. They're not going to dock inside the receptor the same as two um, ethyl groups. So notice how the potency even drops off way more of this compound in orange. It's even weaker than the um, RRAZ derivative. I was just going to say it's also interesting. The data is not shown here, but epimerizing that center, C8 center, um, you lose the psychedelic effect as well. Funny enough, yep. this is an interesting topic. Actually, um, I spoke to David Nichols about this, who actually made the other enantiomers of this. They are not active at all as psychedelics, the other enantiomer, which is which is crazy. It's just the difference in the stereoselectivity there that it's not even an active compound. That That's mind-blowing, I think. Just the so difference of a hydrogen being pointed in or out. Yep, cool. So we've all gathered cool. around our molecules here to actually compare them. So we're just going to be turning them on and off one by one and, and talking about them. So the LS LSD mm -hmm. is in the pink and then the LSZ Z, uh, is in the green. Yeah, this is the SSAZ derivative in green, also known as LSZ, that's correct. But basically what we're trying to explain here is that so we have the LSD uh, compound in pink. Right, and then the, we have these two ethyl groups coming off, and you use that stereoselectivity to make this compound in green. And with those compounds, the notice how the methyl groups track perfectly with the uh, the ethyl group right here, and then right here. Yeah, versus uh, if we pull up the RRAZ over here, yeah. uh, I'll just hide the confirmation. Yeah. Yeah. So it's pointing like opposite ways instead of you know following along these paths, they're going opposite ways on both sides. Right, and what what's interesting is that not only it affects the binding here, but also the arresting recruitment in an allosteric way, right? Which is also very interesting uh, about right. this. So that's the basis of the biased signaling. Yeah, it's basically the whole idea here is that because LSA is missing the diethyl amide group, and we talked about how the rotation of a diethyl amide group by 60 degrees is so important for beta arresting recruitment, um, it doesn't have it, so it doesn't actually produce strong arresting recruitment. If you look at the crystal structure paper, the graphs right over here in, in orange, it's much weaker at recruit, recruiting beta arresting because it's missing the diethyl amide moiety. Right. Yep. Yeah, it's strong drop in yeah. recruitment. Potency. In there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I mean, I, I hope that we could see um, you know things like this. You know, maybe if not the natural compounds, but at least you know something uh, like this that ends up helping people with depression. Um, especially with with COVID nineteen pandemic lockdown. Um, you know, a lot of people did die of COVID, and and it was really horrible. But there's like more things that are now happening that are repercussions of you know COVID nineteen. Um, you know, mental health is becoming a, a much larger issue that we need to all deal with as a society. So yeah, hopefully science could help out everyone with that. Uh, we're very hopeful that um, you know, people like you, you know, curing everything from COVID to cancer to helping out with, with mental health and, and feeling good. And uh, yeah, we're just excited to see the scientific community continue to make good developments. So yeah, thanks again for joining us, Asher. Oh, of course. Thank you guys. Thanks, Asher. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yep.